Welcome to my first ranking on this channel. Today, we are ranking every album by the Beatles. I would have a long intro, but I think you understand the idea. 13 albums, 13 available spaces. Let's do this. Number 13, Yellow Submarine. With how much the song is remembered in the mainstream media, you may be surprised to see Yellow Submarine this low. I mean, this album has All You Need Is Love, All Together Now, Hey Bulldog, and It's All Too Much. While this looks good at face value, you may forget that this soundtrack is for the Beatles movie from 1968 titled Yellow Submarine. This would be like considering Bohemian Rhapsody an official soundtrack for Queen albums. There's four original songs in this album, which do slap but it's not enough. This is easily the worst album by the Beatles, and I genuinely can't believe it's considered an official album. Number 12, Beatles for Sale. After three albums in a very short amount of time, this album had a lot of anticipation during the Beatlemania takeover. However, the Beatles were incredibly fatigued from their past albums, and they were not allowed to break. It really shows with this one. The only track with any lasting impact on me is Eight Days a Week, and maybe No Reply. These songs would be above average on other Beatles albums, but here are the highlights. No reply, more like no replay. However, this is honestly still a pretty fun album. It's as bad as a Beatles album can be. With those two out of the way, let's get to some classics. Number 11, The Magical Mystery Tour. It is almost impossible to follow the album that this one did. More on that later. The Magical Mystery Tour is the only Beatles album to focus on one genre, psychedelic rock. With that said, there was a lot less potential for creative in this, creativity in this album going in. They milked this genre for all it's worth, when I personally think they should have spread all of these songs throughout all the other albums. It is simply too much. Some may argue that Pink Floyd does psychedelic rock only and has some of the best albums of all time. You wouldn't be wrong, but the Beatles simply aren't Pink Floyd when it comes to trippy music. No one ever will be. A fun yet restrictive album. However, I am genuinely happy of how great this is. This album has All You Need Is Love, Hello Goodbye, Penny Lane, and the legendary song Strawberry Fields Forever. However, I feel there was just too little diversity to be higher on the list. Number 10, Please Please Me. It may seem unfair to rank the first Beatles record so low, but it goes to show how much they improved as time went on. This song has the classic Love Me Do and the jovial cover of Twist and Shout. Also, I saw her standing there slaps. However, this album had some great tracks, but most of it is just decent. It's very obvious that this is the first album they made. If you run all the way through the album, you will enjoy yourself. When comparing Please Please Me to some later albums, it doesn't have a leg to stand on. Number 9, Let It Be. Many Beatles fans forget how good of an album this is. Let It Be is obviously the main focus. However, there are multiple great tracks. Get Back, The Long and Winding Road, Across the Universe, etc. Everybody knows how good of a song Let It Be is, but I am, I am of the opinion that it's a very good album as well. This was the last album released by the Beatles, and I'm shocked they have so many ideas left. More on that later as well. If you disagree and think that people will rank this album fairly, let me know in the comments, I'm interested. Number 8, With The Beatles. With The Beatles is a sophomore album for The Beatles, and I do enjoy it quite a bit. All My Loving, Little Child, Please Mr. Postman, and especially Hold Me Tight. A very impressive album to run through or skim in my opinion. I personally like this album because it has no mainstream songs. It is simply a fun album to listen to and jam to. Not bad for a second sitting. Number 7, Hard Day's Night. For their junior album, Lennon and McCartney were officially granted full creative power. Harrison and Starr weren't writing at this point. It really shows how much potential the Beatles had in this album. A Hard Day's Night itself officially launched Beatles Mania, if there was any doubts that they would be legends in the making. A Hard Day's Night is a great song in of itself, but the rest is great. If you really want to get a taste of early Beatlemania, this is your best bet. Number 6, Help. This is pretty much the last of the five boy band Beatle albums, and I personally find it the best. I seem to be alone in the opinion that this record is one of the best by the Beatles. It is a movie soundtrack, but unlike Yellow Submarine, I'm absolutely positive that every song here is unique. Help itself is just a way better song than Yellow Submarine, and that's the T sis. This album also caps off Yesterday, with the, which is the all-time favorite of countless fans. Ticket to Ride, You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away, Dizzy Miss Lizzy, I've Seen Just a Face, and my personal favorite from this album, You Like Me Too Much. Very impressive album, I must say. I want to point out these final five are so good, I consider them all number one at some point. They are all more than interchangeable, so by all means, let me know if you disagree. Number five, The Beatles. Well, let's just call it the white album. The audacity of The Beatles had to make an all-white cover for an album? I love it! They were supposedly sick of people expecting incredible album covers with hidden nuances. So here we are. The album itself is incredible. It has 30, count them 30, songs of the highest highs and the lowest lows. This is, in my opinion, the least consistent Beatles album. And there's a good reason for that. This album is essentially a compilation of whatever came to the Beatles' heads. Almost as if there was an episode of Family Guy with only cutaway jokes and no plot. Right. This is a bigger waste of time than Ringo's songwriting. <laughs> Hey guys, I wrote a song. Oh, that's great. Oh, good, Ringo. Fantastic. You know what? I'm going to put it right here, right on the refrigerator. That way we'll get to see it every day. All right. Almost every Beatles album has a theme involved with some boundaries. 
If not, they all sound like a cohesive album. The White Album is not cohesive at all. It just jumps from genre to genre at a whim. I don't have a big issue with that, but I have to deduct points wherever I can in this tight race for the top spot. There is a lot of good in this album and a lot of weak things to sit through at times. It is the most confusing and hardest to rank. I'm sorry, White Album, but you are the worst of the best. Number four, Rubber Soul. I am really sorry, Rubber Soul. If the Beatles were any other band, you would be the best of the best album by them. But the Beatles are the Beatles, and you don't even scratch the top three. My sincerest apologies. You can argue that this is the biggest step forward for the Beatles in one record. They became a band that let their minds run rampant, and I mean that in a very positive way. This album had what I consider John Lennon's best song of the Beatles in my life. Everything about this song is so perfect to me, and it is definitely the highlight here. Drive My Car, No Weird Wood, Nowhere Man, The Word, Michelle, and Girl are all so great. Number three, Revolver. I almost put Rubber Soul above Revolver in the coveted top three spot, but I gave it to Revolver by hair. Revolver is the moment that the Beatles officially became a band that did not care what the media thought, and they wrote whatever they wanted. However, unlike the White Album, this album is very diverse, but it all makes sense as, a good, as an album. It starts back to back with Taxman and Eleanor Rigby, two songs that make me hate society more and more every time I listen to them. I also really like Your Bird Can Sing and Good Day Sunshine. And as I look at this album, every song stands out to me, except for She Said, She Said, without a doubt my least favorite Beatles song. But it's at the end of the first record, so you can just spin it, you don't have to listen to it. Every Beatles fan seems to think this is the penultimate Beatles album, and while it's not my number one, it can definitely could be. If it's your favorite, I totally respect that. Number two, the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Ah yes, Sgt. Pepper's. The Beatles album that everybody wants to seem to put up on the fridge. I don't disagree with people when they say this is one of the greatest albums by any musician ever. The album feels like a true experience, as the record begins and ends with the Beatles singing as if it were a live performance. It immerses the listener in a very creative way. The second song is a cover of With a Little Help From My Friends, a very fitting choice that fits the album's progression. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is great, and no, it does not seem like the right time to bring up Keith and Lucy. The album keeps up with some standouts like Lovely Rita and Good Morning, Good Morning. And the finale is quite possibly the greatest Beatles song ever made, A Day in the Life. To this day, I cannot believe such a beautiful song exists. Simply the perfect way to end the album. Most music fans wouldn't consider it one of the best songs of all time. However, it was born to be a cult classic. You'd be hard pressed to find a Beatles fan that doesn't think this is the greatest song they've ever made. Number one, Abbey Road. Abbey Road was the last album the Beatles ever recorded, and it's the best in my opinion. It won't be easy to sell myself in this one, but I'll try my hardest. I promise. This album is essentially split up into two parts, so let's take a look. The album kicks off with Come Together, a pretty hard song for the group. In my opinion, this is the song that best represents all four of the Beatles in one track. It goes into something, that's the actual name of the song, something, one of Harrison's best songs ever. Maxwell Silver Hammer is oddly catchy considering what the lyrics mean. Oh Darling is a song I never hear about, but let's not act like it doesn't slap! Octopus's Garden is a Ringo classic, which I would take over Yellow Submarine any day. I Want You She's So Heavy seems to be a pretty divisive song in the community, but I like how extreme it is for a calm album. You wanna know the best thing about this album? We're only halfway done! That was side one. Side two starts with Here Comes the Sun, which is their most popular song to this day. And after that, it begins. Paul McCartney wrote nine incredible songs to be played in succession, and I personally think it's one of his best accomplishments. I would go into detail on every song, but let's just say they're all incredible to play back to back. What's interesting is that Paul McCartney performed so well in Abbey Road that John Lennon officially got fed up of being a sidekick. Even before this album was released, he went solo. The sad part is that the last song on the album, The End, doesn't signify the end of the album, but the end of the Beatles. Thanks for listening to the longest video in the history of mankind. I hope you enjoyed and were enthralled throughout. Let me ask you, do you perform these long detailed videos or the videos where I was more brief? With that said, tell me your favorite Beatles out in the comments. I'll see you next time!